because eventually we probably start making spaceships. And all hell can break loose uh, when you make spaceships. For instance, here's a pattern. I don't know if I'm going to run long enough to, uh, to see a spaceship. But uh, this is a pattern which is very similar, uh, except that here the spaceships that are being fired back into the crystals are two different uh, frequencies. And the result is that the crystals uh, interact with each other in much more interesting ways. And uh, at this point, uh, what I think I want to do is stop this and go to the pink program, believe it or not, and show you uh, what happens after a while. What happens after a while is that a, a column of spaceships develops. It looks like it's just cranking them out. But in fact, these are, about, these are pairs of spaceships about 10 million apart. And, and many hours or maybe a couple of days of computing with them with the, out here. If you get any kind of collision in this neighborhood here, uh, amazing things can happen because uh, gliders can get over here and interrupt the power supply to, uh, to the crystal here, restart the crystal down here, and in fact that's about to happen because here's that telltale pimpums I was telling you about. Right there is the center where there's some static stop. These are packets of gliders flying out. This is the result of one of these spaceships hitting one of these fires. It looks like it ought to really happen all the time, this solid line. But this solid line, look, look at the scale here. The scale is a million to one. So that means there's a trillion life cells in each pixel, and if any one of them contains a glider, then the whole thing will be here. So these, these things could be like one every million, uh, and, and it would still look like a solid line. So uh, the, these guys are going to go down here and whack this. These guys are going to go up here and whack this. And what happens next? Uh, well, actually, I should show you the thing again. Uh, you know, a slightly later stage. Okay, so here it is. Uh, here's the quick comes in. You can see the little dots there. I think you can. Uh, they're, they're, you can't see this corner because uh, that uh, corner of the pinpoints is hidden in the uh, in the beam that contained the, the, the collision and the collider that, that started this whole mess. Okay, so this thing is heading down here, and boy, is uh, is you believe it's about to get a fan, uh, and there it is. Okay, so it's it's cut this off. It's starting a new crystal here, uh, and uh, so there's about uh, 12 million spaceships here. Then that's going to lose its power supply. This is all going to shut down here. Uh, we, Okay, but while it's shutting down, these new guys are going to go out there and interact with these dying beams, these, these new rays. This guy would go up here and restart this crystal, except that there was already a guy heading up there to restart that crystal. So, um, excuse me, and if we, if we look, actually grab this thing here, uh, right, and just move it up, uh, excuse me, okay, well, all right, you can actually see that the angle is different. You see the, the, uh, the lower one has a sharper angle, which means that this crystal formation velocity is greater than uh, the crystal form that, that was going on. So, uh, so what that means is this, this is a completely different crystal that's forming here, and, and the, the, uh, whatever's going to happen over here is going to be completely different. So in fact, if we go over here and run this forward another few billion, uh, this is what it looks like uh, right there. Uh, so here you see this thing is largely shut down, um, and these, this, uh, this, this, see the spaceships are now shut down. That the last one is right there, and, uh, and so there's a whole, a whole new regime. But now notice a whole new bunch of spaceships is forming over here, and now I guess we can hunt the, uh, hunt the, uh, yeah. Okay. So now this is another screenshot. Uh, of this thing, uh, a few more billion down the road. This is 19 billion, uh, and we have to go up here. Let's see, can I do another thing here? Okay, so, so this peanut here shows you. By golly, uh, this is actually part of another quintum. There's a, right there is a, a dot that I always overwrote. Right there is another one. So this glider is heading this way. This guy is heading this way. It looks like the whole thing is going to happen. I waited like a week. I, I just ran this thing late into yesterday, hoping that this thing would would resolve so I could really show you what's going to happen. But in fact. Uh, I, I fast forwarded some, so I picked this glider up and I put it over here where it would be at a few zillion from now, and this one down here. It turns out this one goes up here and simply dies. One of the spaceships just kills it, doesn't have a bleeping thing to do, doesn't have the slightest effect on the, on the input beam. This guy goes down here and deletes 1.0 spaceships and, and dies, and so it doesn't restart this crystal either. But one missing spaceship going up here can change everything. It can change the speed that this thing is forming. If that happens, these lines will all bend, uh, and it will just completely change whether these spaceships form and what they run into. Uh, but eventually, it's just clear that the whole thing is just going to repeat uh, on, a, on a 
grander scale, because one of these guys is going to hit, or another one of these guys is going to hit. Turns out that thing right there is a heavyweight spaceship. Maybe that could hit. Uh, so, so this is pretty interesting to watch. I mean, you could waste a lot of time watching this, uh, but maybe you know that's the limit of how exciting it get. But not true. Uh, there's, there's right now what we're seeing is a constantly declining population density. It doesn't look like it because uh, of the way the display is going. But these beams are getting thinner and thinner and thinner with that linearly increasing population, quadratically increasing area. So we're heading towards zero density. That will probably level off because eventually we're going to start seeing those sprouts like we saw from those nonlinear things. That's going to, if they happen to the positive density, that's going to cause uh, a quadratic growth and there'll be an asymptotic uh, finite density. It turns out we've seen as many as four of those four in one of these experiments. They interact with each other in incredibly complicated ways. It's so complicated that uh, Gotts has actually submitted a paper about it to the Artificial Life Journal. And, too hairy to go into now, but uh, but these things just keep getting more interesting, that, which is why we call them novelty generators. Um, now, in terms of status, uh, I should have mentioned in this oscillator page that uh, all but 10 periods, uh, there's an interval starting with 19, ending with 53, all of the unknown periods are in there. Any other number you set, people can make an oscillator of that period, which is a tremendous accomplishment, and, and, but it's also fascinating because it means it may be mathematically impossible to make a period 19 oscillator, and until somebody does, we won't know. Uh, so uh, the question is now, what about the analogous uh, question for, uh, let's see here, for, for uh, spaceships? Uh, probably don't need that. We could actually use some hyper so a bit here. So let's just... This little race happening here. These are the known velocities of spaceships. So there's, there's half, a third, a quarter, but two sevenths, incredibly. Uh, Clever ones have a weak the weekend here. Uh, a sixth is the slowest uh, of the uh, linear things. So just a little race here, right? And so you can sort of see their speeds. Uh, and then similarly for diagonals, uh, we have this, uh, which is we have quarters here, we have uh, one fifth, one sixth, and then finally down here we have one twelfth. So those are the known diagonals, all the spaceships. Well, I forgot one, <coughs> namely the caterpillar. <coughs> How can I possibly need one of these you know, progress bars just to load one, one spaceship? And well, the reason is it has uh, 11.9 million dots in it. Uh, and <coughs> if we uh, zoom it up, uh, say that much, uh, and, uh, and start, you know, ingesting. Did anybody see the time bandits? You know, the, the devil had an executive office building of approximately this architecture. <laughs> Uh, and here I am, just trying to scroll to the beginning of this thing. Uh, it's called uh, you know, the Caterpillar. It travels at 17 C over 45. Uh, and uh, when we get to the beginning, I'll be able to show you how it works if we ever do get to the beginning. Uh, there it is. OK, so here's the beginning. OK. Uh, so what happens is uh, we have these, uh, these high automatons, and they crawl up these ladders of blinkers, and they rub it together, and they make gliders. And so there's your profitable <laughs> margin right there. And by, by exploiting that just over and over and over again, we get enough gliders so that we can whack them together and make spaceships. And the spaceships race to the beginning here. And then they decompose at exactly 17 C over 45 and throw the gliders back. And the gliders turn back into blinkers. And that supports the growth of these, of these pi tornadoes. And then there's a huge apparatus on the back end to clean everything up so that it's really a spaceship and not a puffer train. And uh, this thing will actually run at a few hundred hertz in Dolly, but it takes like 10 minutes to warm up the hash table, so I can't show it to you. Uh, on the other hand, I can show you the mechanism. Namely, the, the mechanism is, uh, is this pi heptomino racing back and forth on this ladder of blinkers, and that is in fact the 17C over 45, uh, at which the, the giant caterpillar travels. 